first off, let's go to our first guest of the day and uh, say hello to a fighter who has been through a lot, who has done a lot, and who is competing this Saturday at the event at the Apex in Las Vegas. She is Jessica Rose Clark, sporting some fantastic hair on this Wednesday morning. <laughs> hello, Jess. How are you? Good. How are you? Yes, long time no speak. It has been a while. It has been a long time. It really has. has been a very long time. Um, yeah. And I trust that you're doing well, and there's a lot to talk to you about. Could I ask, what's the inspiration behind this particular hairdo? Um, well, you know, I feel like because Margot Robbie played Harley Quinn, and she's Australian, and I also have the heart tattoo on my face, I get uh, likened to Harley Quinn a lot. So I went, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go for it. It's uh, She was my inspiration. Okay. I don't know how long it's going to stick for, but it's definitely here for this weekend. So what is that, uh, purple and red? Pink and okay. blue. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, you, close. Yes, yeah, so so I'm I'm colorblind. <laughs> also, would it be embarrassing if I admitted that I have no idea who Harley Quinn is? No, that's okay. fine. She was she was the Joker's <laughs> girlfriend. Oh wow! She was the Joker's girlfriend, and then she was played by Margot Robbie, who's an Australian actress in the Suicide that. Squad movies. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Wait, the Joker's girlfriend's in the Suicide Squad. Yeah, she's Harley Quinn. <laughs> Wait, the Joker's in the Suicide <laughs> That's Squad? the Joker's girlfriend. What the yeah, hell? Suicide the... Squad movies. Really? I didn't know it had anything yeah. to do with Batman Suicide Squad. That's the movie with John Cena. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh. Harley Quinn's in it. Like, I think she might be the only woman in it. <laughs> wow. Okay, so this is who you're paying homage to. Yes. I yes. love it. I love it. You know what? When I saw it, I thought of that. And I just wanted to confirm that it was Harley Quinn that you were being. <laughs> I'm just you joking. just said you didn't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to save and, and be cool here. I have no idea who you're talking about. It sounds great, though. It sounds great. Um, so you're back this weekend. Uh, luckily, uh, a little momentum for you because the last couple of years have been tough. Uh, this must feel nice, yeah. like a weight, like lifted off your shoulders that you could come back in a normal amount of time, right? As opposed to a year off in between fights, like the last two fights. Honestly, that that's been my whole thought this week this week since I got here I was like oh my god I was just here I was here four months ago you know I, yeah I was here in October so I only had three months between that and now and it's it doesn't even feel real because I think since 2018 I've fought once a year or once every year and a half and like between injuries and it's just been it's just been frustrating so I'm super happy to to be consistent this time and I hope that I can continue this for the rest of the year I was reading uh, an article about you from 2020. So when you came off the first year layoff, right? Uh, mm -hmm. 2019, 2020 it was almost a year in between fights. You returned in September and you were talking about how like you legitimately didn't like MMA anymore. You didn't like training. You were dreading it. You weren't happy in the sport. Why? What, what, what yeah. didn't you like about it? Why was it not feeling fun anymore? Um, honestly, you know, I, I'd lost to Jessica. I, and then got badly injured as I was prepping for my next fight and was off for a year and then fought Panny Kainzad, who I'd already lost to back in Invicta. And it was just the, you know, I, I'd moved from cat from Vegas to California. I'd left my gym. Like I was starting with a new team. I was still kind of, I was, I was still transitioning between Vegas and Northern California. There was just a lot going on and I was letting, Instead of letting MMA be my escape and training be my escape, which it always has been, I was I was letting my ex, my my personal life affect what I was doing, you know, because I was so unhappy in my personal life. It just I was unhappy with everything, and I really shouldn't have taken the Panny Kianzad fight. Like I was coming back way too early off surgery. I was starting with a new, I mean, off injury. Sorry, because I didn't have surgery. I was coming back too early off injury. There was a lot of things I wasn't able to do in camp it was my first fight back at 135 pounds after being at 125 for the the previous three or four there was just it was just a lot and I I really should have like paid attention to all the signs because there were so many things leading up to that fight that were like hey this isn't the right move even my coach Kirian was like this isn't the right move but because I wasn't 100% with him yet I was still splitting my time between extreme couture and CSA in California he didn't feel like he had the ability to say like this isn't this isn't what we should be doing right now. And so it was just in, in hindsight, like one, I'm really grateful that everything happened that way because it made me realize that I needed to refocus what I was doing. Cause I, after I lost to Panny the second time, like I got to Moscow, I had food poisoning all fight week. I weighed in underweight. Like I was sick. I was still throwing up after my weigh in. Like it was just, 
there was no excuses. Like she was, she's been better than me twice in two fights now, but there was, there were a lot of external things that were going on. And, um, I, I considered retiring after that fight because I was just so unhappy. I was like, like, why am I doing this? If I'm, if I can't even win a fight, like I keep losing, I've lost two, like I've lost two in a row before, but you know, everything's super dramatic when you're in the middle of it. Um, but now looking back, like that was two and a half years ago ish. Um, I'm very grateful that everything happened the way it did because it made me realize that I needed to refocus. I needed to, to kind of reconfigure my personal life and how I was handling external stress instead of, I was just kind of trying to sweep it under the rug and hope that I could outwork the way I was feeling. And it wasn't, it wasn't the case. It just, it all came out when it came down to flight time that I had the extra stress and stress and the pressure and being in a foreign country. And yeah, it was a lot. How close were you to actually walking away? No, uh, I mean, that like I took I took a decent amount of time off, um, and when COVID happened and every all the gyms shut down, we were running online classes, and I was the only one. Well, there was me and one other fighter that were allowed in the gym, and I would demonstrate all the online classes. And so then I think just being able to have that time by myself. Um, just working out, being in the gym, being, it was usually just myself and coach Kieran in the gym those times that really helped me realize like, you know, if I walked away, I would miss this, you know? And then when I signed the fight for Sarah Alpa, that was kind of my make or break fight. Like I made the decision when I signed that fight, you know, if I don't enjoy this camp and if I don't enjoy fighting again, that'll be it for me. And I think that in its own right was very free. Because that that fight, when I fought Sarah, like that was one of the best nights of my life, you know? And then because I took that pressure off myself about winning or losing, it was purely just about enjoying what I do again. And I did. I loved, even though I, I blew my ACL out in that fight and had to take another year off. But it it uh yeah, that that fight was my make or break and it made me realize how much I actually really do love doing this. So I think if I hadn't have fought when I did, I might the story might've been a little bit different. Did someone in particular help you get back on that track to loving it? Or was it just like the time away, being alone, pandemic, being at the gym with the coach, like all those things added up? Or did you have to talk to like a sports, you know, uh, psychologist and stuff like that to help you kind of regain your love for the sport? Yeah. So I, I started, so after I lost to Panny Kianzad, um, Hans Mollenkamp from Monster was in my corner for that fight, right? So he was with me all week and saw what I meant, what a mess I was. So after that fight, he gifted me for that Christmas a couple of sessions with his therapist, with his psychologist. Okay. And she has changed my life. Like she, she really helped me um, recognize that, like she helped me stop focusing on wins and losses, you know, because we, we as fighters, we put so much stock in whether we win or look, win or lose, like that's our sole identity. Are we winners or are we losers? You know, because it's hard to be in a competitive sport like this where it's one on one and not feel like you're a loser if you lose a fight. Like it's it's very hard to separate yourself from the decision. So my therapist, Kristen, she really, really helped me kind of, I guess, peel back all the layers and and remember why I started doing this in the first place. Re like remember all the things that I love about the sport that I love about competing and stop focusing so much on the outcome. So she was super integral. And then I also had, had Hans, you know, like I, I talk to him almost every day. Um, he's, he, you know, he's the one who helped me get through, who helped me go sober. Like he's the one who helped me through my sobriety when I first stopped drinking. Um, he's the one who, who helped me when I was thinking about retiring and between him and coach Kirian, um, those two were, were super integral. And then even when the COVID stuff happened and I was, and I was the one in the gym demonstrating the classes, like just being able to talk to Kieran every day and having him, he, he like, he really created a safe space for me, you know, because he, I've had coaches in the past who like, if I was winning, I got all the attention. If I was losing, like I was, I was on the back burner, you know, and with Kieran, he just wants to see me win as a human being. It's, it has nothing to do with, with my athletic career. And it's taken me a long time to trust him and to believe that that's the case. But once I started to realize that through that, through that, uh, shelter in place period, I think that also let me, uh, let go of a lot of hurt that I was carrying and a lot of, a lot of trauma from previous coaches, previous gyms, all that sort of thing. So my therapist, Hans and Kieran were, wow. were probably the three that got me to where I'm at, at right now. How long have you been sober for? 
Uh, it'd be four years in July. Okay. Well done. Thank you. That's amazing. Okay. So things are coming together. You come back, you win uh, two Septembers ago, September of 2020, right? As you mentioned, yep. you feel good, weight lifted, and then you tear your ACL. <laughs> yep. How tough was that <laughs> mentally? Uh, yeah, that sucked, you know, but um, I, I think I kept a pretty positive uh, attitude about it through the whole thing. You know, uh, I had a couple of days where I was like, oh my God, like, I can't believe this happened again. Like I'm injured again. I'm on the shelf again, you know, but um, Kirian really made me see that, that if I was going to get injured, like that was the best possible situation to get injured in. Like I, I was coming off a big fight, like a good fight. I had a lot of hype behind me. Like people always remember your last fight, right? So to come off, to come off that win, that finisher of Sarah Alpa, and then be on the shelf for a year. I really don't feel like I lost any momentum. Um, and I, and I, I was very public about my recovery and everything as well. So I think even just being very open about where I was at with my recovery also kept me accountable. Like I, I didn't give myself the option to kind of hide away and be upset and be depressed and be down about it. Like I think the day after, two days after my surgery, I went back to the gym and and just did one-legged rowing on the rowing machine, you know? Like I made sure I was in the gym every single day doing what I could do. And honestly, you know, when I when I started camp for, for Jocelyn Edwards, like I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified of, of wrestling. So I threw myself into wrestling because I think, like I'm pretty sure I know where my ACL tore in that fight with Sarah and it was it was in the wrestling moments, you know? So then that had me terrified of wrestling. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to throw myself head on into this thing that I'm so scared of doing because I was so afraid of getting re-injured. Um, and I just, yeah, you know, I, I had such a good support system that even on the days where I was super down, like I couldn't, they didn't let me be down for very long. I was, I was very lucky to be in the place that I'm at. Not only did you throw yourself into wrestling, you went to Mr. Wrestler himself. You went to DC, right? Weren't you with DC? Uh, yeah. Uh, AK. So how do you how do you split your time? Do you still do that, or do you not go to AK anymore? I don't go to AKA. I go to DC's wrestling. You academy. actually so go to DC's genuine... wrestling academy. Wow. With yeah, the kids, where, with yeah, the high school uh, kids. Yeah, with the high school kids. That's amazing. Man, some of those little girls beat the hell out of me. Wow. Like I, my first day back after that, because I, I I wrestled there for this camp as well. Um. DC was traveling a lot. So I wrestled a lot with Deron Wynn. We would, he would come in early because uh, I can only train at one specific time based on my schedule because it's an hour drive for me. Um, and I drive, some days I drive five hours between different training sessions. So wow. my schedule is very tight. Like I don't have a lot of leeway or leniency. Um, so we mostly, I mostly wrestled with Deron Wynn this camp and he has been an amazing coach. Um, but yeah, the first day I went back after the Jocelyn fight, it was like, a, it was, it was one of the high school practices. And there's a bunch of these little girls, like 115, 120 pounds. They're like 14 years old, 15 years old. And I was like, whatever, I'm a grown woman, you know? And, uh, DC made me wrestle with them. And I got, uh, excuse me, shit beaten out of me. Wow. And I was like, how are these little girls holding <laughs> me down? Like I couldn't, it, it completely destroyed my ego. And I was like, okay, I need to come back to wrestling. I need to do this more. Uh, Duran in your corner. No. Okay. No. Okay. Um, no. You said you said uh, you're a grown woman. Uh, I believe if you ask Sean O'Malley, you're a mature woman. I am a mature you're, woman, you're apparently, which I've never been. I've never been right. called that before, and I'm not entirely sure how to take that. <laughs> he but. seems to have a, a great affinity for you. In fact, he said that the uh, the heart tattoo comes from you. Uh, we became friends. After, because we had the same management for a while, and so we became friends in Vegas. I think after he won on Contenders, okay. and then he was in town. I got introduced, and we like I showed him around Vegas a little bit, um, and then yeah, like two weeks later, I see him and he's got a face tattoo, and I was like, and I knew I was like that has to be because of me. Like, there's no way that he hangs out with me, and then goes and gets a face tattoo, and, and then doesn't admit that it's about me. But that was the first sign that he's admitted that it was okay wow. because of me. And I'm like, which. I'm all for like, it looks great on him, but I'm like, just, just be honest about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let me be the inspiration. Give credit where it's due. How, by the way, how many tattoos yeah. do you have? Uh, I think around a hundred now. hundred. Wow. Yeah. First one. How old were you? 
18. It was it was just after my 18th birthday. You have to be 18 in Australia. I don't know if you have to be that here, but mom took me to get it for my 18th birthday and she chose it and she was supposed to get the same thing and she didn't get it. And now I have this gecko on my hip that hurt so much and oh. it looks terrible, but I don't ever want to cover it up because that's what my mom gave me for my 18th birthday, you know? And why that? What, what was the uh, significance? <laughs> no idea. No idea. You can uh, you can ask her if you ever meet her. She she probably doesn't know either. <laughs> and and how long after the first do you get the second? Um like a year and a bit. Okay. I went through this I went through this spate between like most of the ones I have now, um, I got once I moved to the US. So it's only been in the last like five or six years mm-hmm. that all these have happened. I think when I first moved out here I might have had ten. Okay, wow. And then yeah, and then like I had my my face and my hands done already, but I, my legs, my arms, I didn't have any of that. And then I, I, one of my closest friends is actually my tattooist here in Vegas, and so I would just get bored and I would text her and I'd be like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And she'd be like, "Come in," and then I'd go in and get something random. Do the ones- almost none of them are playing. Okay, do the ones on the face mean anything? Um, so this one's a broken heart. And initially it was a broken heart because my nickname is the heartbreaker. Mm-hmm. Um, and my my ex actually got one on his face and then convinced me of it. And so then I got it. Um, and then I got it colored in purple when I moved out to the US. Like I left him and everything, then kind of wanted to change it a little bit. Um, and then the anchor, I'd always heard this story about in, because American traditional tattooing comes from the Navy. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I'd always heard this story about guys in the Navy getting an anchor tattooed on them that was supposed to, it's, I think it was usually on the hand, but it was supposed to signify that you were the captain, you were in charge. So I also like to be symmetrical. I couldn't have one and not uh, have the other, but I chose the anchor for that for that reason. And and why is your nickname the Heartbreaker? So when I had my first MMA fight, um, my coach, Igor Breakenback, back in Sydney, he when, when we went to weigh-ins, I was super nice to my opponent. Like I'm always nice to any everyone. I don't, I don't hate the people that I'm fighting. Without them, I don't get to do my job, you know. So I never have any animosity towards them, even if they don't like me. So I was super nice to my opponent, and then um, I finished her in the fight the next night. And then my coach was like, "Oh, I'm going to call you the heartbreaker because he's like you're friends with all these girls, and then you beat the hell out of them and you break their hearts." So has nothing to do with with my romantic life, which everyone seems to think it is. I'm like, that's a really weird. Um, like why would I, why would I make my nickname about my sure. romantic life? But yeah, but that's what it came from. It's like the heartbreak kid, Sean Michaels. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah. 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 I thought maybe. Yeah. And it would have, and like, I would have, I would have taken that one if it wasn't already taken. Right. Right. Or you. Cause HBK sounds way better. Yes. You could, cu- would you come out to his yeah. music? Would you ever do that or no? Have you ever heard his song? I actually don't know what his music is. Oh, you don't know his music? It's, I mean, that's sure. more shocking than me not knowing who Harley Quinn is, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I, th- they, they say I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I know the girls. It's more about a guy. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. He's just a sexy maybe boy. Could, sexy. Maybe that could be the next thing. Yeah. But did Harley Quinn for this one, maybe, maybe change wow. the song is Let the next one. Let me tell you something. One. If you walk out to Heartbreak Kid and wear well, you can't really wear his uh his outfit because of the whole, you know, venom, but it would be, I think a lot of fans would dig it. I'm just I'm just gonna throw it out there. Hey, let's let's say when Nick Maynard finally puts me on a pay per view, yeah, what the I will walk out to to the Heartbreak Kid. Why don't theme they song. Okay. That's is that a promise? Yeah, promise. Okay. Now, why isn't he putting you on pay-per-view? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't think there's any reason. I just think there haven't been any fights on pay-per-view oh, okay. yet. Okay, fine, fine. If you yeah. walk out to the Heartbreak Kid music on pay-per-view, you will be immortalized on this wall. We will put your picture up on this wall for life. Deal. That's the deal, Done. okay? Immortalized Done. forever. Done. This is bigger than the UFC Hall of Please. Fame, this wall. I just want to let you know. <laughs> this is a greater no, honor. No, I believe it. Okay, I just want to let yeah, you know. Yeah, I believe it. Um, also, also, let me let me say something. So I heard in your intro uh-oh. that people were saying that you've gotten away from MMA and like yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of talking trash on you for that a bit. I just want to say I was most excited about being on your show oh. again, for, like and talking to you for the first time. So thank you. I personally, as a UFC fighter, don't think that you've removed your don't feel like you've removed yourself. I feel wow. like you've kind of put yourself at this level where now it's really exciting to be on your show. Wow, what I mean, can I just? Thank you for that. You're you're actually going to get immortalized just for saying that. You don't even have to walk out to the song. <laughs> that means a lot to me. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. Um, by the way, oldest of nine children, yes? 
Uh, oldest of eight by blood, 17 collectively. 17? Yeah, because I have I have a few like half brothers and sisters who each have oh. who each have other brothers and sisters, you know. Oh my so God. there's eight of eight of us by blood though. Wow. Okay. And and your first entry into school was fifth grade. Is that accurate? Yeah. Well, so yeah, what, I what, did homeschool before that. What were you doing before that? Just staying at home? Homeschool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. Um, I did a lot of my own education. Honestly, like my grandma taught me to read, and then we were we were with like this. Um, like a Christian homeschooling company and they would send workbooks and everything and give you like, you have to do pages seven to 10 today of the math book and whatever. They would give you instructions. Um, and my mom, cause there were so many kids. My mom was often with the other kids. Like they were the younger babies. Right. Uh, so a lot of my schooling I did on my own through that. And then when I finally went, moved in with my grandma, she, she worked full time and her husband worked full time. So then I got sent to school. Was that a weird transition for you? Now you're around other kids so all the time. Because yeah. I honestly, like how I grew up, we grew up on a bunch of different communes um, and it was always adults. So I'd been around adults. Like I didn't know how to talk to kids my own age. Like I was a loser in school, in primary school. I was such a loser because I had no idea how to interact with people my own age, you know? So I just like, I kind of got by on being smart and being really good at sports. And then I, I, I would always end up in the popular group but like when we would do that, because you know, every every group in school would be like, okay, we're the Spice Girls. And each one would be a certain Spice Girl. I was always the shittiest one. Like I was in the popular group, but then I would always be like Ginger Spice, you know? Mm-hmm. I would always be the worst one. I was going to say Sporty Spice because, you know, you said you were good at Yeah, sport. no, I no. was never Sporty Spice. Okay. No. By it was way, like, it was like, it was like pity inclusion. Like I yeah, was included yeah, yeah. because I was so bitter. Did they call you Jessica Rose, like your friends, or do they just call you Jessica? Uh, my friends will call me Jesse because I prefer Jesse. Okay. I like, I like Jesse, Jessica or Jessica Rose. I don't mind. I really hate being called Jess though. Did I say Jess at the beginning of this interview? I think I did. Yeah, but it's cool. Damn I it. almost said something. And I was like, why did you say something? Cool. I don't, you know what? It doesn't matter. I should have said that. I don't even know why I said that. It was too, it was too like, it's fine. Yeah, it was too. Fr- I mean, last time we spoke was like five years ago. I don't have the right to say Jess right off the bat. You got to kind of. Easier way. No, it's fine. Jesse, Jesse is cool. There's also at my gym. There's a ton of Jessicas. Okay. So Jesse keeps me kind of like I don't get lost in the mix, you know. Outside. Okay, I get it. It, it makes you unique. Uh, well, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Um, so it's we're, fun. So we're back this uh, Saturday. Uh, you know, you're yep. you're looking to build some momentum. You win this fight. I know you were a little bit. Is it fair to say a little disappointed? Like you, I I felt after your last fight, you're like. I got the win, but that wasn't like what I wanted. You know, you just wanted to get back. So now you're looking to make a statement. We want to be a little more aggressive, a little more impactful on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. A, li- a little more my style, you okay. know, because the, the, the thing that's like tripped me out the most since the last fight is I get so many hate messages and comments going, Oh, are you even going to throw a strike this time? Oh. And I'm like, I've had 22 fights and I wrestled one time. Yeah, like literally one time I wrestled and out of the other 21 were all striking. And I'm like, you're going to, now I'm like, I'm put in this box because people only remember your last fight, which is right. why I said it was good that I got injured off the Sarah Alpha fight. Right. So I'm like, that's an okay one to be remembered by. But, um, this, you know, it was, it, that, that last fight was the right plan for that opponent. Like we knew that Jocelyn Edwards was a, was a wild striker. We knew she had power, you know, like there was, I like our goal is always to to win by someone's B game, you know. So like the her B game was her wrestling. So that was the smartest thing I could do for that particular opponent. Plus she hit me so hard at the beginning, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to do that again. Like I don't want to get hit like that again, you know. I don't blame you. Um, this next opponent, you know, her her A her A game is her grappling, which means that I'm. Mm. I'm almost forced to be to be a striker again, which was the same with Sarah Alpha. Her A game was her grappling, you know. So it's just really, it's just really sticking to the game plan and 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 figuring out everyone's B game and then capitalizing on that. So I think this fight is going to be a lot more entertaining than what the last one was. And then afterwards, we going home. I feel like home is calling you. You 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 you're talking a lot about representing Australia, going back to your Australian roots, being a proud Aussie. I feel like home is calling your name. Yeah, I've definitely been getting pretty homesick lately. You know, like I, I had my mom. Um, she sent me, she sent me a bunch of 
photos of when I was growing up, you know, and of all the kids and stuff like that. And I just, I lost it. I had like a full breakdown. I'm like, man, I'm so homesick, you know. Um, I am going to have to go home to do my visa soon anyway. So I'm just, I'm just hoping that that happens sometime in the next couple of months because I do, I really want to go see my family. Like I haven't seen my mom. I haven't seen my mom in three years and I haven't seen my brothers and sisters in almost five. Wow. So I think, yeah. So I think, I think it's getting time for me to go home for a little bit. Definitely not permanently, but you know, maybe for a week or two, just go see everyone until I get sick of everyone again and want to come home, want to come back here. Cause the U S really is my home. You know, like I've been here six years. My dogs are here. I'm settled here. Like my, my chosen family are all here, but I do need to, I do need to go back and see my family soon. Well, I hope you get a chance to do that. Um, I would love to have you on again, uh, not, you know, five years from now, more often. Yeah. This was great. I appreciate your time and I wish you the best this Saturday. Uh, Jessica Rose Clark, a.k.a. Miss Jessie Jess, going up against Stephanie Egger, not Jess Clark or Jess Rose Clark. Uh, get or it right. Jess Jess. Or Sugar Jess Sean Jess. Likes to call okay, yeah, that's, Jess Jess. That's bizarre. Um, I'm also going to watch... Worst the movie that you mentioned, Suicide Squad. It sounds like a great film. Suicide Squad. I'm not familiar with it. Yeah. But I heard John Cena was in it. That's all I really know. But John now, Cena's in the second one. Okay. And then the first the first one has um well they both have they both have Margot Robbie and then they both have Jai Courtney, who's another Australian actor. So you gotta go watch he's in the full first movie mm. and then he dies in the second one. I know of Margot from I think uh, Wolf of Wall Street, right? She was in that yes. yeah she was tremendous. Yes. 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 Uh, got away from the Australian accent in that one, which I think speaks to her acting skills. Alas, we could talk about that at a different time. Um, I, yeah. th I think the, the hair is great. And I can't wait for the walkout, the HBK walkout, the next fight, pay-per-view. I'll talk to Mick about that. Mortalized yeah, on the deal. wall. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck to you, Jessica. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. See ya. All right. There she is. Miss Jessica Rose Clark, a.k.a. Miss Jessie Jess, a.k.a. not Jess, a.k.a. not Jess, Jess.